How's it going everyone? Welcome to this week's Q&A. So like any other week, if you want a chance of one of your questions being answered on a video just like this one, make sure you drop a comment down below with your questions. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the first question of the week. And it is, are the 2.0 T's uh, likely to have oil dilution issues much like the 1.5 T's early on that Honda has. So a lot of that did have to seem to have to be uh, some software issues. Now, uh, it could still happen. Uh, on those engines really depends on a certain uh, different uh, circumstances. Now, I personally have not seen any, but it doesn't mean it can't happen. So uh, direct injection R's by nature are, or uh, direct injection engines, I, I should say, by nature are more prone to having uh, dilution issues, which is where uh, some of the gasoline makes itself into the oil. So some ways to prevent that is limit your idling time, especially in the colder months and uh, along with make sure you do take some longer trips. So short trips and idling time really seem to uh, promote that issue. So if you limit those scenarios, chances are you're not going to have that issue. Again, uh, I haven't seen any personally, doesn't mean there isn't any out there, but also doesn't mean there is some out there. If you had had a situation with the 2.0 T, so we're talking about in the RDX, in the TLX, and the Accord uh, at this time, uh, drop a comment down below with your uh, situation, your scenario. If you had it, if you had some, maybe, um, you know, some sampling done at a facility with where they test your uh, oil, anything like that, drop a comment down below. Let's talk about it. And, uh, you know, we could, you know, have everybody be educated and just kind of be all on the same page. Again, I haven't seen any, but if you have, drop a comment down below. So hopefully that answers your question for you. So the next question is how to read your oil level on these dipsticks, on these newer engines that have the orange section in it to indicate the low and the high level. So uh, if you're not familiar with it, some of them are particularly hard to read. Uh, some of those engines include the 1.5 T. So um, some things you can do is, uh, what I like to do is obviously follow the manufacturer recommendation for the oil fill. Now you still should go back and check your oil level. Make sure you didn't underfill it or overfill it or anything of that nature. So what I recommend is uh, taking some uh, a rag, a white rag, and wiping it clean, then putting it back in and drag the rag all along the dipstick until you see the rag or towel or paper towel, whatever, a cloth, uh, start to change color and absorb some of that oil. At that point, that's what you like to see and that's where the oil level is. Now, if you don't change your oil on time, chances are it's no longer orange and it's more of a brownish color. And at that point, uh, it's gonna be easier to identify. So I don't know why they want with the orange. It's really hard to tell. Uh, the old metal style worked just fine. Sometimes things are just better left alone and trying too hard sometimes, you're just doing way too much. So uh, this is just what it is. If you're changing oil on time and you're carrying or checking, uh, you probably have a nice and bright orange. If you don't care about your engine and you're not changing the oil and you're following the algorithm, chances are by this time, it's already that brownish color and easier to tell and you're probably not checking it if you're that type of person regardless. So uh, I don't know why they chose to do that. Uh, if you have any other tips, drop us a comment in the section down below. Um, maybe you have something that we haven't seen or anything along those lines and we could all you know use that tip to uh, check these oil levels So hopefully that's a question for you. Next question is is it fair to have a charge on a warranty repair? So uh, that's a tricky question because sometimes people bring their cars in and say well my car's brand new Why do I have to pay a diagnostic fee? So the reason we do that is because sometimes what you think may be warranty ends up not being warranty for example and this happens a lot rodent damage on brand new cars or fairly brand new cars. So people come in, they bought the car a week ago, two months ago, three months ago, all these lights are on a dashboard and now uh, you bring the car in for service and we charge a uh, diagnostic time in the event that you decide not to do the repair. So nobody likes to work for free, myself included, or any other technician or the service advisor for that fact. So a lot of times we'll get these people, they're upset naturally being, you know, I understand but uh, it's not our fault that the rodent or something chewed your wiring. Also, other times a car has been involved in a collision and uh, therefore no longer covered by Honda. So that's why we charge the warrant, uh, the diag time, because a lot of times people take the car or whatever the case may be at that point. So that's there in the event that it is not covered by Honda and you decide to take the car elsewhere. So everybody gets paid uh, you know, a fair amount. So uh, if it is or ends up being a warrantable repair item, then that, we, uh, that fee is waived and you should not be getting charged for anything 
that is covered by Honda. Now, working with third-party warranties, sometimes it is tricky because, again, we'll charge the diagnostic fee. People say, well, I have a warranty. And nine out of 10 times, those companies don't, uh, you know, they don't uh, cover almost anything. So, again, to not waste our time, we charge that because a lot of times they won't cover it. Then the customer doesn't want to pay. They want to take it to their mechanic, which is fine, but at least we get paid our diagnostic time. So happens a lot. Also, a warranty company will pay a bare minimum and at times we'll say, well, uh, for example, I have a time belt tensioner that is bad. The warranty, uh, warranty company wants to pay us an hour to replace that tensioner, not including the diagnostic time. Now, I know exactly what the noise when I hear it, but doesn't mean that my knowledge shouldn't uh, you know, come at a price and it shouldn't be free that I know what it is. And if you took it elsewhere, they wouldn't know what it is and actually had to go ahead and uh, you know, to take everything apart to confirm it. Now, uh, I still take off the top cover to confirm it. So there is still some time being spent. Now, I do it quicker than most people, which is fine, but they wanna pay an hour total of the whole job, including diag time and replacement for a time belt tensioner, which is ridiculous. So. Um, at that point, it gets complicated and we're going to uh, charge the customer an additional fee. Now, whether you agree with that or not, that's fine, but we're not going to do all that work just for a simple hour. So sometimes these companies are willing to work with you as well, uh, which is great. Sometimes they're not. So it really gets tricky, depends on a company and a situation and stuff like that. But if it does pay less than Honda warranty time, absolutely the the customer should have to pay the difference. If it pays at least Honda warranty time, then that is fair, but Honda warranty time on this particular vehicle, I believe it's 2.1 or something like that. So uh, we're having a customer pay the difference because it's only fair that we're not working for an hour's labor. That's just you know unacceptable in my opinion. If you disagree, that's great. That's my opinion. So hopefully that answers the question for you. So the next question is about the 1.5T, but this really applies to any engine. So at what mileage should you be thinking about changing your water pump, your timing chain, timing chain tensioner, uh, VTC actuators, and uh, things of that nature, including the valve adjustment. So if you maintain your vehicle properly and you're changing your oils on a timely manner, you should not need a uh, timing chain, a timing chain a tensioner or a VTC gear. Now on some of the K-series back in the day, they did go bad and some of the fits, uh, but generally speaking, Honda has rectified that issue and we don't see any more issues. So you can have 100,000, 200, 300, even 400,000 miles on an original chain. Uh, tensioner and VTC gear. Sometimes it's both sides, sometimes it's just one. Um, but you shouldn't have to worry about it as long as you've been changing oil between three to 5,000 miles. Nine out of 10 times, that is going to be absolutely fine. Now, a valve adjustment, I would personally recommend about every seven years or 100,000 miles, whatever comes first. Um, obviously, if the car has 10,000 miles and it's seven years old, it probably won't need it. Now, if it's got 80,000 miles and it's seven years old, chances are it idled for some time and stuff like that. And you should be changing or thinking about adjusting those valves at that time. Um, if you go and do a head gasket on a 1.5T, for example, that has 150,000 miles, and for some reason it actually made it that far without needing one earlier, at that point, it would probably be a good idea to change that chain, the tensioner, and that water pump. Now, the water pump, I would probably be okay with doing it at around 100,000 miles. Honda water pumps are relatively good. Some of them do fail, but for the most part, they're okay. Um, but if you wanted to change it at set mileage, I would say at 100,000 uh, to 150, somewhere in that range would probably be acceptable. Now, the, the problem with the 100,000 miles is usually you have a decent amount of maintenance, especially if you have a time belt side. Now, if you have a timing chain, then you'd probably be looking at just a water pump at that time, a dry belt, uh, you know, spark plugs, valve adjustment, which could still get pretty uh, timey, uh, costly on the labor and the parts. So. Uh, if you had to prioritize it, I would say uh, the dry belt, sometimes they crack, a spark plugs for sure, uh, water pump, I would wait until you do the dry belt, and then the valve adjustment, if you're not having any issues, you could probably leave that one for bottom last, but get to it eventually. So, hope it answers this question for you. Last but not least, question of the week, and once again, if you want a chance to win any questions being answered, make sure you do drop a comment down below. So, the question is, should you be using an engine oil flush? Uh, at X miles and a simple answer is going to be no if you have been doing your oil changes between three to five thousand miles uh, At this point there should be no issue with oil consumption or anything of that nature now if you've been doing 10 15,000 mile intervals at around 100,000 miles or maybe sometimes even earlier I have a CRV in a shop now that has four oil changes on record with 60,000 miles 
and it is consuming oil. So obviously too little too late for that. Well, um, engine oil flush of some sort work? I don't know, probably not. Uh, an old uh, technician uh, told me that he used to do back in the day. So this is old school guys. Uh, he would do, for example, if your car took five quarts of oil, he would do four quarts of oil, whatever was recommended, and one ATF and uh, use that formula for a couple oil changes, swap it out every 3,000 miles. And he said he saw positive results. If you have anything to confirm this, great, drop a comment down below. I'm not gonna go ahead and test waters for any of these customers' cars, uh, but if you want to test this theory, again, uh, document it, uh, drop a comment down below with this. If you have any other old school remedies or anything like that, I'd love to hear about it. Let's talk about it. Um, and we could you know, all learn from each other. But a uh, simple rum, uh, rule of thumb is three to 5,000 mile oil changes, guys, uh, and you should be okay. It's a small investment, a small cost for a large investment. So it costs you maybe, let's say, um, $80 every three to four to five months versus having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars in the long run. It hurts a lot less to do it in small increments versus one large uh, lump sum. So uh, that's just my opinion on it. I'm not doing any cleaners or anything like that on my oil. And uh, if you do, great. If you have a recommended uh, brand, uh, drop a comment down below with positive results. I'd love to hear about it once again. So hopefully that answers the question for you and I'll catch everyone on the next one.